And welcome back to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Andre Davis alongside Dr. Mike Prince. The star line for the Wildcats, number one, Tory Richardson. Number two, John Vogue. Number four, Jordan Guidry. Number 15, Jordan Bryce. And number 33, Justin Rubble. And the star lineup for your Waller Bulldogs, number two, Corbin Vines. Number five, Philip Prince. Number 21, Jonathan Morris. Number 22, Charlie Hill. And number 25, Zach Kelsey. As we are moments away from our opening tip-off in today's ball game. And, and Mike, you mentioned before during the pregame show that it, it kind, of, kind of made me laugh a little bit that if, if, if – uh, Philip Prince is kind of the leading scorer on the team, then, you know, that that means that, that there is something wrong. But I actually remember in that game against Huntsville that one of the things I mentioned before the pregame show that I actually would like to see the guard kind of get kind of get involved in the game more early because most of these teams have already have gotten number 25, Zach Kelsey's number, as well as Jonathan Morris. Most teams know that Wall is going to beat the big man early. But getting the guards kind of involved in the game early, you know, can kind of, you know, change up the tempo a little bit. Well, you got other guards other than Philip Prince who can shoot the ball. <laughs> uh, you have Corbin, Corbin Vines. You also have uh, the likes of Charlie Hill, who's kind of like a hybrid type guard forward. Uh, you have uh, other people, uh, McGrew coming off the bench, <laughs> Pelot coming off the bench. So there are a lot of them. Phillip's job is to assist, defense, and lift up emotionally. <laughs> and, and that's true. But one thing that I don't want to see, especially from the guards that are seniors, that being Philip Prince as well as Corbin Vine, you, what you don't want is you definitely don't want them to be afraid, afraid to shoot the ball, meaning that a lot of times, you know, especially if you find yourself with a wide open shot, Maybe it's not really necessarily uh, necessary to pass up a wide open shot to try to get the ball down low to a man that's not really open. I do understand that, and and when you have that open shot, now if you're driving to the cup, I can understand that. But if you know your range is 12 feet and in, <laughs> when you do shoot it, you better hope the Dickens that it goes in. <laughs> well, because normally we kind of see the Bulldogs kind of try to force that ball into. Uh, Morris and Zach Kelsey and, and maybe even, you know, Charlie Hill, you know, they kind of got Zach Kelsey kind of playing around the perimeter more often. As teams are coming out from their respective huddles, the Bulldogs will be moving right to left on your dial, coming in with their all maroon and white lettering. As the tip-off is on the way, it will be controlled by the Wildcats, moving left to right. As Richardson has it for the Wildcats, Bulldogs in their 3-2 zone defense as the, as the Wildcats just working the ball around. They get in there to Rubble. Rubble kicks it back out to Richardson for the three-point jumper. That's no good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. Nice defensive uh, rebound for the Bulldogs on that transition. Coming back on the timeline will be Hill. Hill working on the left side. And they're trying to get it down to the big man, but he kicks it over to Prince on the right side. Prince kicks it back down to Hill. Hill with the layup, and it's in. That's what you want to see. You want to see Hill get off to an early start, and that's always a good sign for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs striking first blood here in today's contest, leading 2-0, to zero, seven minutes left in the first quarter. As the Wildcats cross the timeline, it will be Richardson. As the Wildcats are just being patient so far, they kick it to Rubble. Rubble diving, shooting a layup. No good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. Great job once again on the defensive rebound for the Bulldogs, giving them only one shot. Now they're back on the attack. Prince coming back from the timeline. He kicks the Vines. Vines shooting the layup. No good. Rebound by the Wildcats. Quick up the court for the Wildcats will be Bo. Bo kicking it to Gidry. Gidry soon as he loses that ball. Turnover caused by the Bulldogs. Moving right to left, it will be Hill. As Hill kicks it to Vines. Vines kicks it down to the big man. Moore turned around for the mid-range jumper. That's no good. Rebound by the Wildcats. As the Wildcats moving the ball up the court. As Gidry kicks Gidry to the layup, no good as he gets foul on the play. Uh, they're gonna say they're gonna say shot no good. The foul will be on the ground charge against the Bulldogs. Right now we're trying to see if this scoreboard is going to be working to give us the accurate call, but it looks like they did not call it, so we'll be guesstimating unless it's obvious who the fouls are on tonight. As the Wildcats inbound the ball. And shooting the jumper for the Wildcats will be Gidry. That's no good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. That time the Bulldogs missed the first opportunity and was able to regain. 
As Kelsey shooting a layup and it's in. That the Bulldogs take a 4 0 lead here in the first quarter with six minutes remaining. And that's what Prince does get the assist. As Richardson shooting a jumper and it's in. A three point jumper by Tory Richardson for the Wildcats. Could the Bulldogs lead down to just one here in the first quarter, 5.45 remaining? Prince crossing the timeline for the Bulldogs. As Prince working from center floor and he kicks it to Morris. Morris working from the perimeter. He kicks it down low to Vines. As Vines being guarded by Gidry, he's trying to find Morris. They're going to call over the back that time against the uh, Wildcats. Uh, Morris was in position for that turnaround. Looked like he was going to turn around to that fadeaway jumper just inside the free throw line. That, that same Dirk Nowinski fadeaway jumper that he <laughs> also loves that he has developed throughout district. And with that foul, it will be the Bulldogs' ball. As the Bulldogs come down the ball, Prince will have it. He kicks it over to Vines. Vines wasting no time for the three-point jumper. No good. Rebound by the Wildcats. A good look that time by Vines. Just didn't fall down for him. Not being afraid to shoot the guard, trying to get into, get into this ball game early. As Gidry kicking it down low to Rubble for the two points, and it's in. That was actually a good uh, penetration move by Gidry to hit Rubble and get that quick, easy basket for the Wildcats. Prince crossing the timeline. He keeps the Vines. Vines set up the offense. He finds Hill. Hill being guarded by Rubble. Rubble. Hill, John penetration. The layup, no ah. good. Rouse around the rim, and it goes out. Yeah, that was, a, that was a rough time that time as the foul was picked up against Wildcats. The shit, I thought that would have been a shooting foul. Yeah, we see if we saw Hill, you know, signaling to the ref that it should be a shooting foul, but they're going to call the foul on the ground as we have substitutions for the Wildcats, number 30, Ben Batts. As the Bulldogs will end down at their own basket, they get it to Hill. Hill wasting no time for the layup, and it's in. Well, that is a good sign when Charlie Hill has got four of your six points early in the contest. As Lowe bringing the ball down, he kicks to Gigi. And a turnover caused by the Bulldogs. It will be Prince. Took up the court. He finds Vines. Vines shooting the layup. No good. He was looking for the foul. Rebound by the Wildcats. And it will be Bass. Bass kicking it to Vol for the layup. And mm. it's in. That was a blown opportunity for that time for the Bulldogs on the defensive turnover. And with that shot, the Wildcats take a 7-6 lead here in the first quarter with 423 remaining. And Prince crossing the timeline screen by Kelsey. Prince off the screen. He finds, he finds Hill in the corner. Hill kicking it down low to Kelsey. And Kelsey loses that ball, turned over, caused by the Wildcats as Richardson quickly up the court, and he finds Gidry. Gidry swings it over to Grice. Grice in a three-point jumper, and it's in. That was a good look by Grice. He got it over. That was a turnover on the inbound. But another turnover off that turnover caused by the Bulldogs, quickly up the court, it will be Vine. Vine stops penetrate. He finds Hill. Hill wasting no time for the jumper, and it's in. Charlie Hill getting going early in this first quarter with six points of his own. Yes, sir. Charlie Hill is warming up, and that's exactly what we talked about at the pregame. 10-8 is our score in favor of the Wildcats here in the first quarter with 3.30 remaining. As the Wildcats, that ball rolls around the ground, is picked up by the Wildcats, and they're going to call a foul charge against the Bulldogs. That foul is going to be on... Number 22, Charlie Hill. Yeah, Hill in disgust about that. We're not liking that call. And I got to agree with him on that one because they both were kind of scrumming for the ball. Not any body contact. Nobody hit the ground. Just reaching in, chicken scratching, if you will, trying to get the ball. <laughs> well, just in case this may be a close ball game, we know Hill definitely would want to get that foul back as the Wildcats end down the ball. And Richardson has it. Richardson wide open for the three-point jumper. No good off the right side of the rim. Rebound by the Bulldogs. Good job boxing out by the Bulldogs again. Now they're on the attack. As Tompkins kicks over to McGrew, McGrew kicks it down low to Morris. Morris in the layup, no good, but he gets fouled on the play. Yes, he will be shooting on that one. They do apologize right now. They got this nice big scoreboard that has it where <laughs> the, the foul and who it is on, either they don't know how to work it or it's broken, one or the other. Well, hopefully they can they can figure that out, you know, during the course of this ball game. <laughs> As number 21, Jonathan Morris, the big man, if you will, will be shooting two for the Bulldogs to potentially tie this ball game up. As his first three throw is up and good. And he will shoot one more. The 307 remaining here in the first quarter. That's a good start. Everybody's getting involved. Bulldogs stand on the composure right now. And he misses his second free throw. 
they're going to call a lane violation. Charge like it was against the board. Dogs. Charge against the board dogs. Exactly. As the Wildcats inbounded. Leading 10-9 to nine here in the first period with three minutes remaining as oh. Richardson tried to find Bo on the other end of the floor. <laughs> well, we, he well, we hit the wall and everything. Well, we, he tried to show off his quarterback skills, if you will. On Absolutely. That play. He said, I run a skinny post, <laughs> not the flag route. And he just threw that over everybody's head. As the Bulldogs will inbound and moving right to left, it will be Tompkins. And uh, Tompkins kicks it over to Vines. Vines being guarded by Bo, and he finds McGrew. And McGrew stops his dribble. He fires Tompkins. Tompkins back to Vines. Bulldogs working the ball around. They finally get it down low to the big man. That ball rolls around on the ground. It's picked up by Morris. And he shoots a layup no good. but gets his own rebound trying to put it back up. And he gets fouled on the play. Now, that's a play where I want to see Jonathan go up with authority and just slam that joker. Well, the Bulldogs were kind of scheming a little bit, you know, just passing the ball around the perimeter, and we saw, and they sipped it in there really quick, getting to getting it to Jonathan Morris, as he would be shooting two for the Bulldogs. And his first free throw is good. He tied this ball game up at 10, as we have some substitutions for the Wildcats, number 20, John Gettler, and number three, Bryn Oh, strike. Oh, strike. Oh, strike. Is that like no strike? Or oh, spice. Oh, spice. <laughs> do, 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 do. And Jonathan missed his second free throw, but rebound by the Bulldogs. They lose it. Turnover caused by the Wildcats. It will be Richardson. As Richardson loses that ball, he was trying to find Gettler down low as it goes out of bounds, and the Bulldogs will retain the ball. Yeah, the Bulldogs got to be mindful and play with the intensity Stay consistent, man, and just just show your athleticism and your athleticism dominates for tonight's game. And as we have some substitutions for the Bulldogs, number 25, Zach Kelsey checks in the game for Jonathan Morris. Uh, the Bulldogs coming back crossing the timeline, moving right to left, it will be Vines. Vines swinging it over to Thompson. Thompson kicks it to Hill. As Hill finds Vines, Hill, Vines to a three-point jumper, no good, rebound by the Wildcats. Uh, that ball was rolling around. It was picked up by the Wildcats, but they're going to call a foul charge against the Bulldogs. That's going to be on number three, Andy McGrew. Yeah, McGrew lost the, the uh, ball for a second, and there's always that, that frustration foul, trying to reach in and get it back, and he got the quick foul call. And the Wildcats crossing the timeline and working the ball around the perimeter. It will be Gettler, and they're going to call a traveling violation charge against the Wildcats. Well, sometimes, even in today's basketball game, it's hard to find out what is a traveler because now they call it this Euro step and all this here kind of stuff. I call it the bunny hop. 10-10 <laughs> our score here in the first quarter with McGrew with the three-point jumper. And with that, the Bulldogs take a 13-10 lead here in the first quarter with 140 remaining. First lead for the Bulldogs tonight. As Richardson shooting a layup for the Wildcats, no, no good, but it's tipped back in by the Wildcats. And that was number 30, Ben Batts. Batts uh, doing, getting that second chance scoring. Woo! As Tompkins crossing the timeline, he finds McGrew. McGrew will try a three-point opportunity again, no good. But an offensive rebound by Tompkins, shooting it up and in, and it's good. Four dogs. And they're going to say he stepped over the line on the inbound. Number 10, Ian Gettler, and the Bulldogs will retain the ball. Well, the Bulldogs just got to keep putting that foot down, full throttle. No mercy. No mercy. I keep thinking of 19. <laughs> One sixteen remaining here in the first quarter. Bulldogs leading 15 to 12. Uh, Tompkins will control the ball for the Bulldogs. As he's calling the screen, screen by Trent. Tompkins off the screen. Uh, Tompkins kicks it to McGrew. And McGrew will bring the ball out. He with one minute remaining here in the first quarter. As the Bulldogs being patient on offense. Like they're trying to get the big man, Zach Kelsey, open as he kicks it to Bowdy. Bowdy finally kicking down low to the big man, Kelsey. Kelsey shooting the layup, looking for the foul call as it goes out of bounds. And they're going to say it was last touch by the Bulldogs. Now, what you got to do if you're Kelsey, you got to be mentally tough there. Don't go looking at the referee if you don't get the call that you thought you should have gotten. And did you get a tech call? Or was it timeout? Oh, it was a timeout. Time, yeah, 30 time. second timeout. 30 like, second timeout. Yeah, so I was going to keep it right here. I was like, oh, my God, did they call a tech? <laughs> yeah. But um, <laughs> you cannot be wandering looking at the officials. If they blow it, they blow it. If they don't, they don't. You got to keep your head 
and stay focused. And you got to realize you're on the road. You got to realize you're in hostile territory. Nobody is going to give you anything. So just earn your keep. Some calls are going to be made. Some calls are not going to be made. You got to play through it. And he absolutely, he definitely has a size advantage here in this ball game. Him and as well as Jonathan Moore. So there's definitely going to be other opportunities for him to score here in this ball game. So he, as long as he keeps that in mind, everything should be fine for the Bulldogs as teams are coming back from the timeout. With 49 seconds remaining here in the first quarter, it will be the Wildcats' possession, trailing 15 to 12. As Old Strike crossing the timeline, he finds Richardson. Richardson being guarded by Tompkins. Richardson kicks it back to Old Strike. Old Strike finds Whoa. Gettler. As Gettler kicks to Richardson, Richardson for the midpoint mid race jumper. That's no good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. Yeah, that was uh, looked like a travel call, but the Bulldogs did benefit. <laughs> as you as you mentioned that. As the Bulldogs come across the timeline, they find Kelsey. Kelsey trying to find Tompkins. The ball is picked up by the Bulldogs. And, again, they're trying to find Tom, uh, Tompkins, but it's going to be a turnover charge against. Yeah, they're going to call a blocking foul against the Bulldogs after the turnover from uh, Ferris Tompkins. Yeah, trying to get it down. And that was a frustration, another one of those frustration fouls that you mentioned before in this ball game. Yeah, they, they got to just, just keep composure, <laughs> man, and, and, and make this thing happen. It will be the Wildcats' possession here with 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter as Old Strike controlling the ball for the Wildcats, and he finds Gettler. Gettler kicks it over to Bat. Bat's job penetrating, and he kicks it back out to Did they call it traveled in? Yeah. That was that Euro hop we've been talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. Every time they, they call it. But exactly. you know, on the collegiate level, they don't call that at all. As the Bulldogs came down the ball. And with that, our first quarter has come to an end. The Bulldogs on top of this on far by the score of 15 to 12. We're going to take a break and come back with the start of our second quarter. Bulldogs leading 15 to 12 right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the Temple of Refuge Ministries located in Prairie View, Texas. Garland Harris Jr. of Keller Williams Realtors in Houston, Texas. Attorney Lee Van Richardson of Hempstead, Texas. Lone Star College of Tumball, Texas. Edmonds Insurance in Waller, Texas. Larry's Automotive in Waller, Texas. Gunderson's Bookkeeping in Waller, Texas. District Attorney Elton Mathis. Prairie View Athletic Club. The Hotline Press in Hempstead, Texas, and the city of Hempstead. Thank you for your contributions and support of our student athletics here throughout Waller County. And, and welcome back to the Mike Broadcast Network. Andre Davis alongside Dr. Mike Prince. Uh, teams are coming back from their respective huddles for the start of this second quarter. It will be the Bulldogs' possession. Moving right to left as Prince kicks it over to Morris. Morris gets it down low to Vines. Vines finds Hill. Hill with the mid-range jumper. This time, no good. But offensive rebound by the Bulldogs. And Morris puts it back up for no good as he gets fouled on the play. Another opportunity for Morris to try to create a three-point opportunity where he will be going to the line and shooting two for the Bulldogs. Well, Morris is banging down in the paint like you like you need him to do. And um, this is the Bulldogs version of the Twin Towers when we talk about Morris and, and uh, Kelsey. Right now, uh, Morris is two for four from the free throw line. As Morris sinks his first free throw, make him three for five from the free throw line as he will shoot one more. And this is what we mentioned, Mike, in the pregame show, the Bulldogs kind of getting their foot on the gas early in this ball game. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> Positively. <laughs> and sincerely, as Morris sinks the second free throw, to give the Bulldogs a 17-12 lead in the second quarter with 7.40 remaining. As... The Wildcats crossing the timeline. It will be Old Strike. Old Strike being trapped as he kicks it over to Gidry. Gidry with the mid range jumper, and it's in. That was They're a nice three. shot. They're, They're going to say the three yeah. point. I thought he was in the strike zone, but <laughs> within the strike, but they said nonetheless. Well, nonetheless, three point jumper from Gidry to cut this lead down 17 to 15 with 7 12 remaining here in the second quarter. As Vine kicks it down low to Hill. And here was trying to find a cutting Morris to the basket, but a turnover caused by the Wildcats. With a, and they're going to call a foul. Looks like in the backcourt. Call it on heel. Exactly. That's, that's, that's going to be on. 
Charlie Hill. Absolutely. So that will be number two on Hill. And the Bulldogs got to keep that composure. Still up 17-15. Uh, get that intensity back up on the defensive side. And Gidry crossing the timeline for the Bulldogs as he kicks it over to Grice. Wow. Grice is back to Gidry to the long three-point jump. That's no good. But offensive rebound by the Wildcats. As Bo controls it for the Wildcats, he finds Gidry. Gidry kicks it to Grice. Grice kicks it down low to Bat. Bat shooting the layup. No good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. Yeah, that was a blown opportunity for Tumbo Memorial just then. Well, we can see if the Bulldogs can create opportunity as Vine shooting the layup no good, beginning his offensive rebound and putting it back in, number two, Corbin Vine. Corbin Vine following up and get the reward for it with the easy bucket. 19-15, to 15, our score in favor of the Bulldogs in the second quarter, 6-20 remaining. As that ball rolls around on the ground, they're going to call it a jump ball. And I think the possession arrow is going to be – for the Bulldogs. Uh, they're going to say the Wildcats will retain the ball hmm. as we have substitutions for the Bulldogs, number 11, uh, Jordan Lane. As the Wildcats will retain the ball, Old Strike controlling the ball for the Wildcats. He finds Gidry. As Gidry kicks it to Vo, Vo back to Gidry. Gidry thought about shooting. He decided to drop, penetrate, shooting the layup. No good. Rouse around the rim and is picked up by the Bulldogs. Good job. Once again, when you box out, good things come in your favor. And Vines drop penetrating, loses that ball. He gets it back, and he finds Morris. Morris showing his range with the mid-range jumper. That's no good. Rebound by the Wildcats. As Bo shooting the layup. No good. They're going to call a charge on the play. And that was number five, Philip Prince. And that's what he does. <laughs> and we play defense, get a fifth, be the emotional leader. Right and now, the things are falling in the Bulldogs' face. And we saw that in the last game against uh, Magnolia West uh, by Philip Prince, you know, getting the charges uh, for the Bulldogs late in that fourth quarter to create those uh, defensive stops for the Bulldogs. Yeah, one of them was, uh, I can say it now, an official flop of all flops. <laughs> but he did get the call. Uh, but nonetheless, um, a good job. Uh, for the Bulldogs right now, up 19 to 15. Uh, Magnolia, I'm sorry, not Magnolia, but Tumball Memorial want to slow things down, have the guys gain composure, taking a timeout right now. And it's interesting that you mentioned flops. You know, in this ball game, we'll take flops, stops, <laughs> <laughs> yield signs, anything that we can do to uh, to create a defensive uh, turnover in favor of the Bulldogs. Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> As teams are coming back from the timeout, it will be the Bulldogs' ball as the Wildcats are in a full-court trap defense as Vines is controlling the ball for the Bulldogs. Moving right to left, he finds Lane. And Lane kicks it down low to the big man as that ball goes out of bounds. They're going to say it was last touch by... They're going to say it was last touch by, by the, the Bulldogs or now the Wildcats. By, I was going to say, I was pointing in the direction, but... <laughs> you he was helping him out up here. He had his hand <laughs> up like he didn't know what to do. Well, the Bulldogs hit down the ball, getting it to Morris for the two points. For the Bulldogs. That's six points for Morris. That's his first field goal of the evening. 21-15, our score in favor of the Bulldogs in the second quarter. 5-17 remaining. As Gidry, and he kicks it to O-Strike. O-Strike shooting a layup. No good. And he gets an offensive rebound, putting it back up. No good as number one, Tory Richardson, will be going to the line for the Wildcats. Who did they just call that foul on? It looks like. They call it on five? I believe they're going to call that yeah. foul on, on, on Prince. Prince. He's over there justifying his case. <laughs> that's foul number one on Prince. Well, as players, that's what we do. We justify when we feel like we in the right. <laughs> and he's going to sit down and talk about it <laughs> on the bench. <bed. laughs> as Richardson sinks his first free throw, and he will shoot one more. 21-16 our score here in the second quarter in favor of the Bulldogs. It appears to be stoppage in the play. It looked like it was a lane violation called against the Wildcats. As a result, it's going to turn the ball over for the Bulldogs. So the Bulldogs. I don't believe that Richardson was able to shoot his second free throw. Uh-oh. As that ball is turned over, caused by the Wildcats, picked up the court, it would be Gidry. Gidry shooting the layup for the Wildcats, and it's in. That was actually a good trap that time by Tom Ball Memorial. 21-18, our score in favor of the Bulldogs. 
And another turnover caused by the Wildcats. Picked up the court in Grice. Grice kicked it to both of the two points. That was a quick six-point turnaround on behalf of Tumba Memorial all behind the press. And speaking of the press, the Bulldogs have not seemed to find an answer. There's another turnover caused by the Wildcats. And the Wildcats decide to slow things down. They'll have a fresh offensive possession. As as Bats, Bats, Bats kicks it to a Vogue. Vogue's a three-point jumper. That's no good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. Well, the Bulldogs got to try to recapture the momentum in this game right now. As Lyons crossing the timeline for the Bulldogs. He finds P. Lott for the three-point jumper. No good, but offensive rebound by the big man Morris that he puts it back in. Morris is hot tonight, and he is going to have to stay hot in this ball game as he gives the Bulldogs a 23-20 lead here in the second quarter with four minutes remaining. As Richardson kicks to Gidry, Gidry kicks it to Bat, and Bat's a turn around with the mid-range jumper. That's no good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. So right now the Bulldogs' big guys that we talked about holding it down for the right down. As P. is working with the ball in the corner, and he kicks it out to the new guy, White, and White kicks it down low to you name it, Morris. Morris with the turnaround jumper. That's no good. Rebound by the Wildcats. Put up the court. It will be Gidry. Gidry trying to find Bryce, but that ball is turned over, caused by the Bulldogs. As Morris shooting the low. Oh. No good. They're going to call a charge. They call charge? No way. Absolutely. They call charge on the play. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> And you can credit that charge to number 30, Ben Bat, as he takes the seat for the Wildcats. Wow. <laughs> that, I just knew he was going to shoot uh, the two points, two free throws, and Claiborne has just blown a gasket. Oh, yeah, he was definitely furious with that call. Absolutely. Wow. He is pacing up and down <laughs> the sidelines here. Somebody get that man a Gatorade so he can get his blood pressure back down. A Gatorade, a V8, a Snickers <laughs> bar, or something. But nonetheless, it will be the Wildcats' possession in the second quarter with three minutes remaining. And oh, that's a backcourt. The Wildcats throw that ball away. It's picked up by the Bulldogs. And Vine shoots oh. the way up, but they're going to say the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Wildcats. Oh, wow. Long opportunity for the Bulldogs, but nonetheless, it will be the Bulldogs' possession. Yeah, yeah as some of the Wall of Nation is getting <laughs> a little bit fit to be tied right about now. Uh, one thing about this district, they have Tumball, Tumball Memorial, Magnolia, Magnolia West, a long bedded history. You got to include Brenham on that. And these teams, they respect each other, but there's a genuine uh, dislike when it comes to athletics. And Kelsey shooting a mid-range jumper. That's no good, but offensive rebound by the Bulldogs. It goes out of bounds. This time, last touch by the Bulldogs, and it will be the Wildcats' possession. Yeah, Morris had it for a moment, but then got in entanglement with Rubel and end up losing the possession, and it's going to be Tumball Memorial right You now. know, Kelsey went outside his range a little bit, shooting a three-point jumper. He normally works around the free throw line, as it will be the Wildcats ball. As Richardson shooting the layup, that ball is blocked by the big man, Zach Kelsey. And Kelsey making his presence felt in the paint, just as you made the mention. I want to see him attack toward a little bit more in. I know he's the Mia guy with the nice soft touch, but those twin towers, I want to attack that cup. And shooting a three-point jumper for the Wildcats, and it's in number 15, Jordan Grice. To well, tie this ball game up at 23. You're being kind, Andre. It went up, around, then finally through the cylinder. Well, oh. in is in. It's a turnover caused by the Wildcats. It's Richardson. Richardson shooting a layup, and with that, the Wildcats take a 25-23 lead here in the second quarter with 2:20 remaining. Bulldogs got to keep composure. Don't let the trap penetrate you and scare you off. As as they cross the timeline, McGrew with the mid-range jumper, no good, but he follows his shot. As he gets his rebound, he kicks it to Pila. Pila shooting a three-point jumper, no good. But another offensive rebound by the Bulldogs. That ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Wildcats. And it will be the Bulldogs' possession. So you got some uh, ball handlers coming back into the contest right now for Coach Claiborne as Prince will now come in. He's the floor general. Uh, he want to make sure that you get, get the ball up and feed people. As Bulldogs hand down the ball, wasting no time with three-point jumper. Philip Prince, no good. And... They're going to call a jump ball, well, and it will be ball, the Bulldogs' possession. Bulldog. I'm surprised to see Prince take that shot <laughs> just coming in. No, I'm serious. He he shot the three. He was about three or four feet behind the three-point range. Three or four feet, but he was definitely wide open on that shot as the Bulldogs retained the ball. 155 remaining here in the second quarter. We are all tied. With, no, 
Wildcats are leading 25-23 as Vines kicks it down low to, to Hill. And Hill is trying to get to the big man, Kelsey. And he gets it to him. Kelsey with the mid-range jumper. No good. But a rebound by McGrew as McGrew kicks it out to Vines. Vines drive penetration. Shooting the layup. No good. Rebound by the Wildcats. Bulldogs have got to capitalize. As O strike driving to the basket, no good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. Picks up the court is Prince. As Prince driving to the basket, moves that ball, but he picks it back up. He finds a wide open McGrew for the three point jumper. That's way off. Rebound by the Wildcats. Somebody's got to step up and play a little leadership role on the Bulldogs right now. As Gidry controlling the ball for the Wildcats, he kicks it over to Richardson. And with one minute remaining here in the second quarter, as Richardson kicks it down low, the guards with the layup, no good. He gets off offensive rebound, put it back up, but that shot is blocked <laughs> by Kelsey. Oh, that's a charge. That's got to be a charge. If they're going to call a foul. I believe they're going to call a foul charge against the Bulldogs. There's no way that was McGrew a foul. Unreal. Nonetheless, it's going to be a foul on number three, Andy McGrew, as number one, Tory Richardson, will be going to the line. And Coach Claiborne is giving the officiating crew an ear feel. <laughs> I mean, good <laughs> night. Um, McGrew, not that tall as the biggest fella, just got run clean over. Looked like a freshman in football camp. <laughs> well, we were in a one and one, so Richardson's free throw is no good, and it's picked up by the Bulldogs as Vine controlled the ball. He stops and finds McGrew down low, and he answers back on the, on the other end with two points of his own. And with that, we are all tied at 25 here in the second quarter with 30 seconds remaining. Five points for McGrew to tie this contest up. As Richardson kicks it over to Gidry, Gidry stops for the mid range jumper. That's no good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. As Prince kicks it to Vine. Vine drive penetrating to the layup. No good. And he gets he got foul on the play and he'll go to the line and shoot two. Yeah, Prince was able to uh, penetrate and get through that time. Find hustling Vines to uh thought Vines was gonna be able to get that through, but nonetheless he'll go to the line and shoot two. Yeah, Vine was definitely trying to look for the three point opportunity. For the Bulldogs, but nonetheless, he will be shooting two as his first free throw is good. As he'll shoot one more, then we have substitutions, and it appears that we're going to have the Twin Towers in the game at the same time as number 21, Jonathan Morris, checks in for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Morris is coming in. He's hot right now. He has a total of eight points for the Bulldogs. And with 17 seconds remaining here in the second quarter, we're going to see if they have opportunity to feed him. One more time before they go into the half as Vines makes the second free throw to get a Bulldogs a 27-25 lead here in the second quarter. Ten seconds remaining as Gidry controlling the ball, and he finds Old Strike. Old Strike being trapped in the corner, but a one oh. and a turnover <laughs> by Philip Prince as he steps out of bounds on his course <laughs> to the basket. Well, that was good hustle. Like I mentioned, you know, you play the defense, find your guys open, good hustle steal by Prince. And just got that, that big foot on the line, and it's called the turnover for the Wildcats. As the Wildcats inbound the ball, as Richardson driving to the cup, shooting the layup, and it's in. And with that score, we will go into the half tied at 27 in this ball game. And you, you mentioned, and you mentioned uh, Philip Prince, you know, getting those, uh, those hustle opportunities on the defensive side of the floor in terms of turnovers and rebounds. But as long as I'm doing that, everything else is fine. But the minute I decide to pull up with a jumper, you know, <laughs> everybody just takes a deep breath. You got to know your assignment and your role. <laughs> in the team. That's all I'm saying. Every, so you're saying that everybody has a role. Everybody has a role. Well, everybody has a role. And we're going to see if the Bulldogs can pull out a victory in this ball game as they go into the half tied with the Wildcats at 27. We're going to take a break and come back with the start of our third quarter. This game is tied at 27. Andre Davis alongside Mike Prince. Keep it where you got it, and we'll be right back. Absolutely. Expand your business? Consider advertising with us at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Our variety of programming coverage provides a great opportunity for your company to get their message heard. For more information, give us a call at 832-213-8824. 
We're taking a break from our live coverage right now, but we'll be right back with more exciting sports broadcasting right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Be sure to visit both of our websites at obnradio.com and ktorradio.com. The station designed with you in mind. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, Prairie View, Texas. You're listening to live sports coverage right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, serving the community since 2002. Be sure to visit both of our websites at ktorradio.com and obnradio.com. You can follow us on Twitter at obn underscore radio. You can follow us on Instagram at OBN Radio. We're also on iHeartRadio at OBN Sports. And you can also follow us on Facebook at Open Mic Broadcast Network. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network, Prairie View, Texas. Did you know that the Open Mic Broadcast Network had 24-hour broadcasting on Tuned In Radio? All you have to do is type in Open Mic Broadcast Network and enjoy our 24-hour program. The station designed with you in mind. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, Prairie View, Texas. We're taking a break from our live community broadcasting right now, but we'll be right back with more exciting action right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Be sure to visit both of our websites at ktorradio.com and obnradio.com. The station designed with you in mind and the voice of student athletics. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, Curry View, Texas. What if I told you that for $6 a month, you could make a big difference in student activities going on throughout Waller County and beyond? For $6 a month, you can become a listening partner with the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Your partnership will help continue to secure the broadcast coverage of all of our high school and collegiate broadcasts that are performed live right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Be sure to visit our website today at obnradio.com and make your donation today. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, the voice of student athletics. The Open Mic Broadcast Network is a community-based radio station located in Prairie View, Texas. Serving the community since 2002, the Open Mic Broadcast Network specializes in local, regional, high school, and collegiate sports coverage. We also provide coverage for a variety of talk shows, sermons, and a whole lot more of community information. Visit our website at atorradio.com and obnradio.com. The Open Mic Broadcast Network serving the community through faith and athletics. Yo, Dad, have I told you how proud I am of you? Hey, thanks, son. What did I do? I think you're eating extra vegetables and snacking on apples. Just trying to stay healthy by eating my nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day. I even saw you slip carrot sticks in your gym bag. You noticed that? I sure did. Well, that's what you've got to do to stay healthy and fit. <laughs> and that's why you're my hero, my role model, my shot and right, All right, what do you want? The car, some cash, and your old school CD. <laughs> oh, my son. A message from the Department of Health and Human Services. Hi, I'm comedian Carol Leifer. Animal experiments are no joke. Thank goodness, scientists are finding better, more humane ways to develop treatments for cancer and other killer diseases. I hope you'll learn more about the Humane Charity Seal of Approval. It helps donors find charities that provide vital care and advanced research without using animals. For information on how you can give and let live, go to HumaneSeal.org. That's HumaneSeal.org. Did you know that physically active children are healthier? It's true. Exercise protects them from diabetes, obesity, cancer, and heart disease. Sadly, nearly half of our kids don't get the recommended 60 minutes of exercise a day. So turn off your kid's TV or computer and take them outside for a walk or a bike ride. After all, what's more important than your child's health? To learn more about getting exercise into your child's life, visit the American Council on Exercise website at acefitness.org. That's acefitness.org. What if you got rewarded for every good decision? What if your heart had a special way of letting you know and appreciate your healthy choices? Oh, I've got to get my family to eat more vegetables. Amazing! And instead of cooking with butter tonight, I think I'll saute our veggies with a heart-healthy oil. You're a genius! 
So really, would your food choices pay off in heart health? Did you know that when you replace bad fats with healthier fats, like those in canola or other vegetable oils, it can lower bad cholesterol levels. And that's good for your heart. Here's a winning idea. Take up the challenge for good health, because the you of the future will say, Fantastic! Learn more at heart.org slash face the facts. Canola Info proudly supports the American Heart Association's Face the Fats campaign. While cutting molding with a 12-inch dual compound miter saw, while holding a newborn baby in your arms, when face-to-face with a congregation of alligators, with the ball in your hands and the entire freaking season on the line. There are a million places you've never considered texting. As you're getting chewed out by your so why would you do it while driving? NASCAR driver Chase Buchanan here, asking you to please stop the text. And together, we can stop the wrecks. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Get the message at stoptextstoprex.org. When severe weather strikes, schools, government buildings, and even Social Security offices may be closed. The place to go to find out about emergency closings is www.socialsecurity.gov slash emergency. Social Security's Office Closings and Emergency Information page provides what you need to know about specific offices that are closed due to weather and emergencies, as well as reminders about upcoming federal holidays during which government offices are closed. Select the Get Email Updates link next to the red envelope to receive emails alerting you to emergencies and closings affecting Social Security. Keep in mind that when the weather outside is frightful, using our online services can be so delightful at www.socialsecurity.gov. And welcome back to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Andre Davis alongside the Dr. Mike Prince. We're at the half in this ball game, all tied at 27. We want to remind all of our listeners that the Waller Lady Bulldogs are in action in today's game as well at home taking on the Tomball Memorial Wildcats. That game is being broadcast on Channel 4 of the Open Mic Broadcast Network by our very own Jordan Curl. as we have about a minute and 25 seconds remaining before we start our third quarter. So, Mike, do you have some halftime stats for me? Yeah, I sure do. I got some halftime stats for you. The Bulldogs are in pretty good uh, uh, seat right now, pretty good position right now in the driver's seat. We talked about the big three for the Bulldogs in the cases of Morris, Hill, and Kelsey. Right now, uh, Jonathan Dorsett Morris has a total of eight points at the half. He has one foul. Charlie Hill has a total of six points, two fouls. Tompkins, I'm sorry, not Tompkins, but uh, Kelsey has two points, no fouls. So if the other third wheel of that, that three-man posse get things going, they're going to be in good shape. Other scores of interest, Corbin Vines with four points, two fouls, and you have McGrew with five points and one foul. Exactly. As they kept their foot on the gas, as we mentioned in the pregame show, and the Wildcats definitely have not seemed to have found an answer for for the big guy, Morris. And so we definitely just want to keep feeding the hot hand, both Morris and Hill, leading to the third quarter, as the Wildcats will have the ball moving right to left, as Gidry kicks it to Bat, and Bat kicks it back out to Gidry. Gidry swings it over to Richardson. Richardson works in the corner, being guarded by Kelsey, and Kelsey kicks to Gidry. Gidry finds Rubble. Rubble shooting the layup. No good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. As Prince crossing the timeline, moving left to right, and he finds Hill, and Hill kicking it down low to the big man, Morris, with the turnaround layup, and it's in. Jonathan Morris. With the first two buckets, here to start the third quarter to give the Bulldogs a 29-27 lead with 7-17 remaining. Good look by Morris with that fadeaway jumper. As Grice kicks it to Richardson, Richardson being trapped in the corner, he kicks it back out to Gidget. Gidget with a three-point jumper from the top of the key. That ball is way off as it goes out of bounds, and the Bulldogs will retain the ball. 7.07 remaining here in the third quarter. Bulldogs leading 29-27. to Look like we got a barn burner back in Waller. 39-36, the Lady Wildcats on top of the Lady Bulldogs right now in the fourth period. We're going to see if the Lady Wildcats can pull out a victory as well as the Wildcats here from Tom Ball Memorial High School. And shooting the layup for the Bulldogs will be Philip Prince. And that's what you do. You drive the ball, don't shoot the jumper. <laughs> 
<laughs> as Prince increased the Bulldogs' lead 31-27. to 27. And shooting the layup for the Wildcats will be Gidry. That's no good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. Puts it up the court is Philip Prince. As he loses the ball, picks it back up for the layup, and it's in. If you notice the two infamous words, layup, Prince, score. Well, both of those opportunities, <laughs> that was a transition layup by number five, uh, Philip Prince. But as we mentioned, you definitely don't want to give up the wide-open jumper. Of course, in those opportunities, there really wasn't no need for Prince to shoot the jumper. The layups were there. But if the mid-range jumper presents itself, you definitely don't. You definitely don't want to. You don't want to ignore it. I'm listening to Jordan Curl right now on Channel <laughs> Four. It is now a one-point deficit. Lady Panthers. I'm sorry, Lady Bulldogs trailing. The Lady Wildcats with three minutes remaining, 39-38. Well, let's go, Lady Bulldogs. Yes, sir. As they are playing the Wildcats at Tom Ball Memorial High School, their last home game of the regular season as there was a timeout charge against the Wildcats. They're going to try to figure out what's going on as the Bulldogs have come out hot in this third quarter, leading by the score of 33-27. to 27. Well, not only did they come out hot, but they got to stay hot. They can't get lukewarm. They can't be inconsistent. Keep the foot on the throttle, man, and finish what you started. As the Wildcats crossing the timeline, it will be Gidry controlling the ball as he swings over to Richardson. As the Wildcats are just working the ball around, Richardson finally drops, penetrates. And he kicked it back out to Gidry. Gidry with a three-point jumper, and it's wow. in. Was it put on the line? Well, it, it was on the line, but they uh, called it three, so you can't argue <laughs> that. 33-30. Well, with that three, the Wildcats have cut this lead down to just three by the score of 33-30 to in favor of the Bulldogs in the third quarter, 555 remaining. As Prince getting it down low to Hill. Hill swinging it to Kelsey with the mid-range jumper. That's no good. Rebound by the Wildcats. And quick up the court for the Wildcats will be Richardson. Richardson kicking it down low to Gidry. Gidry finds Bryce in the corner for a three-point jumper. That's no good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. Yeah, it looked like the Bulldogs was looking, expecting to get a charge. As Prince kicks to Vines. Vines job penetrating, stopping, shooting the layup. No good. A foul on the play. And that should be a shooting foul. As it will be exactly as number two, Corbin Vines, will be shooting two for the Bulldogs. And Vines right now is having a pretty good night. He's two for two from the free throw line. You know, we definitely can tell that the Bulldogs have improved from the free throw line since the start of this late late run in district as Vines thinks his first free throw and he'll shoot one more as we have some substitutions for the Wildcats, number 30, Ben Batts. As Vines would attempt one more from the charity stripe, his second free throw is up and good. Rattles a little bit, but it goes the way we want it to as it goes in to get the Bulldogs a 35-30 lead in the third quarter, 520 remaining. As Bo's being trapped in the corner as he kicks it to Gidry. Gidry being guarded by Prince, and he finds Bass. Bass kicks it to Bo, who's coming to the basket for the layup, and it's in. That was actually a good, beautiful move by Tumball Memorial. 35-32 our score here in the third quarter in favor of the Bulldogs. Five minutes remaining. And Prince crossing the timeline, moving left to right, being guarded by Gidry. He finds Hill, and Hill stops, turn around for the mid-range jumper, and give it to him. <laughs> Number 22, Charlie Hill with the layup. As the Wildcats coming back, crossing the timeline is Richardson. Richardson driving to the basket with the reverse layup. No good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. Vines picks up the court. He finds Prince. Prince drop, penetrates, layup no good. As the opposing side of the floor was looking for a travel call. But nonetheless, number five, Philip Prince, will be going to the charity strike to shoot two for the Bulldogs. Well, once again, Prince is more effective when he's attacking the cup. 436 remaining here in the third quarter. Bulldogs leading 37-32. to 32. As... Prince first free throw is no good, and he'll shoot one more. It's interesting that you say that he's more effective when he's attacking the club. Do you feel like, you know, that was something that Coach Claiborne may have mentioned to him at halftime that, hey, you know, you're more effective, more successful when you're going strong to the basket. Coach Claiborne has mentioned to that, mentioned that to him all season as he just blows two free throws. But the ball is controlled by the Bulldogs, so they'll have a fresh offensive possession 
Four thirty remaining here in the third quarter. Right, Prince trying to find Hill, but a turnover caused by the Wildcats as both up the court. And they're going to call a foul on number five, Philip Prince, again, that and frustration foul. Right, that's that frustration foul. Right now he's not getting any air underneath his free throws. His free throws are flat. So he's shooting at a line drive. You're shooting at the top ta- and started through the target. So, And we have some substitutions for the Bulldogs. Number three, Andy McGrew is going to get some playing time as the Wildcats will have the ball moving right to left. As Bosch in the three-point jumper, that's no good. Ball picked up by the Bulldogs. And Vines controlling the ball, moving left to right, being guarded by Bo. As Vines keeps over to McGrew. McGrew with the three-point jumper. That's way off. As it goes out of bounds, he tried to follow his shot on that play. The ball goes out of bounds, and it will be the Wildcats ball. A quick update for you, Mr. Andre. It's 41-38 with 138 remaining. The Lady Bulldogs trailing right now. Hopefully the Lady Lady Bulldogs can pull out a victory as the Wildcats have the ball and the layup by Bo for the Wildcats. Prince had that turnover and couldn't quite keep possession of it. When Prince coming back crossing the timeline and he was, appears that he was driving to the basket, they're going to call a foul. That foul is going to be on the ground. And number five, Philip Prince was attacking the cup on that particular play as we have some substitutions for the Wildcats. Number 21, Nicholas Manning. As the Wildcats in, as the Bulldogs inbound and wasting no time, a three-point jumper would be McGrew. No good, but an offensive rebound by the Bulldogs. As they're going to call a foul. That foul, again, is going to be on the ground. And Coach Claiborne, is definitely not happy with that foul call as he wanted to be a shooting foul as he said that his guy was going up with the ball. As we have some substitutions for the Wildcats, number three, Bryn O'Strike. As the Bulldogs will inbound and leading 37-34 in the third quarter, 339 remaining. As Vine shooting the layup, no good. Rebound by the Wildcats. As Bo creeps up the court, he finds Richardson. And Richardson is slowing things down for the Wildcats. And he finds Gidry in the corner and gives you back to Richardson. Three twenty remaining here in the third quarter. As Richardson finds Gidry, Gidry with a floating layup, and it's in. Nice move by Gidry that time. Just went, took it right to the big guy, Kelsey. As Prince coming back, crossing the timeline for the Bulldogs, he finds McGrew. And McGrew finds Vines. As Vine kicks to Kelsey. Kelsey with the mid-range jumper. No good. Rebound by, well, picked up by the Bulldogs. As Andy McGrew puts it back in to give the Bulldogs a 39-36 lead in the third quarter with 250 remaining. Seven points for Andy McGrew. And that's what he does. Comes off the bench and scores often and early as that ball is picked up by the Bulldogs with a turnover caused by the Wildcats as Manning picks it back up, shooting a layup charge. No, Uh, they're going to call a blocking foul on number 22, Charlie Hill, as he appears to have had his feet set. You and I both and everybody else in this gym just knew there was going to be a charge, but nonetheless, they call a blocking foul as we have some substitutions for the Bulldogs. The Twin Towers are in as number one, Jonathan Morris, checks in for... The Bulldogs. Well, what's more important about that, that's the third foul for Charlie Hill. He's having a pretty good night tonight. He has eight points, six points in the first half. Hopefully he can play smart and don't get me any foul uh, trouble for the rest of this game. And by you saying that, Mike, as we just – well, it appears that Hill was going to sit down and he's going to stay in this ball game as Manning sinks his first free throw and he'll shoot one more. Well, no, excuse me. I'm sorry. No, Hill will sit down well, with, first, that, yeah, with that Prince, third foul. Yeah, Prince went out. Then he, Prince came back in to replace Hill. And as Manning would attempt to shoot one more free throw for the Wildcats. As his second free throw is good. As we have some more substitutions for the Wildcats. Number 30, Ben Batts. As it will be the Bulldogs' ball. The Wildcats seem to be in their full court trap defense. To try to create a turnover in this backcourt. As... Bulldogs inbound, and Prince keeps the vines. Vines finds Morris. 
And they're going to call it traveling uh, violation, yeah. Jim. Yeah. They got the travel. They got that one right. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it is. Quick update for you. Um, one minute remaining in regulation, all tied 41 41. Let's go, Lady Bulldog. Whose ball is it? <laughs> I'm trying to help you and do this at the same time. <laughs> Jordan's doing a fantastic job, though, on Channel 4. <laughs> well, you're like a robot. We use you for everything. <laughs> uh, the Wildcats coming back across the timeline as Bo nearly throws that ball away as it goes out of bounds, and it will be the Bulldogs' possession. Now, Volt was trying to save that ball and throw it off the Bulldogs, but by the time he touched it, he was already, his foot was already on out of bounds. Right? So the great defensive stop for the Bulldogs, and because of it, they will have the ball as the Wildcats are in their trap defense here in the backcourt as Prince gets it to Kelsey. Kelsey finds a wide open Morris under the basket for the layup. Dunk it! <laughs> <laughs> the Twin Towers working as Morris increased the Bulldogs' lead 41-38 to here in the third quarter, 145 remaining. As Old Striker tried three-point jumper, that ball is way off over everything. No way. That ball did not touch the Bulldogs. You said it. It was last <laughs> touched by the Bulldogs. <laughs> As the referees are really trying to make this into a ball game, it will be the Wildcats' possession trailing 41 to 38 in the third quarter with 141 remaining. As the Wildcats inbound the ball, and Old Strike controlling the ball, and he finds Gettler. Gettler back to Old Strike. Old Strike being guarded by Negru. He kicks it to Vo. As they're just working the ball around, they find Bats, and Bats trying to find Gettler as it goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Wildcats. Right now, the Bulldogs are anticipating that defense right now. they got to make sure they make it count on the offensive tax. As Prince crossing the timeline for the Bulldogs, kind of slowing things down, being guarded by Old Strike. As Prince kicks to McGrew, McGrew wide open in the corner, but this time he starts to kick more to shoot the mid-range jumper from the free throw line, and it's in. Good job. Good ball movement. Morris on fire, 14 points. Jonathan Morris with the mid-range jumper. As Old Strike kicks to Vo. Vo stops for the mid-range jumper. No good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. And Princeton throwing the ball for the Bulldogs as he finds Vines. And Vines being guarded by Gettler as the Bulldogs are controlling the ball, working the ball around the perimeter. As Vines stops his dribble, and they're going to call a traveling violation ah, on I Corbin I Vines. I didn't like that one, but it is <laughs> what it is. You got to adjust and move on. Don't let that affect you. With the traveling call, you're going to have to kind of roll with the punches on that particular call, as it will be the Wildcats ball as Bo kicks it to O strike. And they kick it to Bass. Bass shooting the layup. No good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. A lot and, of blown shots by the uh, Wildcats. And here comes Vines with the layup. No good. But offensive rebound by Morris as he gets fouled. Well, <laughs> looking for the foul call. <laughs> but the ball is picked up by the Wildcats. As Vo kicks to Old Strike. Old Strike pump face. Kicks it back out to Vo. Vo with the mid range jumper. No good. As that ball rolls around as Vo was trying to get the shot at the buzzer. And with that, our third quarter has come to an end, and we're going to keep it right here. As Mike <laughs> appears that he may have had an update on the Lady Wildcats game. Yeah, we got an update right now. Jordan is really doing a fantastic job, and it sounds like that the Lady Bulldogs have just made a three-pointer to make it 44 to uh, 44 to 41. With 45 seconds remaining, the Lady Bulldogs on top. Well, we're definitely going to see if the Bulldogs can, the Lady Bulldogs can pull out a victory in this uh, in this ball game. And we're going to take a break and come back with the start of our fourth quarter. Bulldogs on top of this on fall by the score of 43 to 38. Keep it where you got it, and we'll be right back. The Open Mic Broadcast Network is proud to serve student athletes, their families, and the institutions they represent. Our goal is to provide quality broadcasts that highlights the hard work and dedication these student-athletes are committed to. For a donation as small as $6 a month, you can become a listening partner. Visit our website today at obnradio.com. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, serving the community through faith, 
and athletics. And welcome back to Open Mic Broadcast Network. Andre Davis alongside the Dr. Mike Prince. Just moments away from the start of our fourth quarter here from the campus of Tomball Memorial High School. Bulldogs leading so far by the score of 43-38. to 38. And it will be the Bulldogs' ball moving left to right as Vines are controlling for the Bulldogs being guarded by Gidry. He kicks it down low to Kelsey. Kelsey with the turnaround jumper. This time, no good. Rebound by the Wildcats. Yeah, Kelsey is kind of off tonight, but you got to keep your head up, and your shot will soon fall uh, Soon fall if you're Kelsey. Stay patient. As Richardson is controlling the ball for the Wildcats, and they're trying to find Rubble as Rubble or shoot a layup, no good, rebound by the Bulldogs. The, the uh, Wildcats have missed a lot of uh, in-the-paint baskets tonight. As Vines is controlling it for the Bulldogs, the Wildcats appears to be in there. What it looks to be a 3-2 zone defense as the Bulldogs are just going to be patient like they might be going into their offense where they want the Wildcats to kind of come out to them as they're going to call a five-second yes, sir. violation on number two, Corbin Vine. And wow. He waited a little bit too long to realize what he wanted to go with on that one. And it will be the Wildcats ball. Well, just got the final update. The Lady Bulldogs have just upset the Lady Wildcats 44 <laughs> 41. That's the first loss in district play for the Lady Wildcats. Yes, sir. We're going to definitely want to tip our head to pass to Coach Durham and the Lady Wildcats for pulling out that victory. Well, while the Bulldogs are pulling out that victory, as they're going to call a foul on that play, foul charge against the Bulldogs. Is that 22? Yes, sir. Wow. They're going to call out number 22, Charlie Hill. That appears to be, I believe, his fourth foul in this ball game. Foul on the ground, so the Wildcats will inbound it as Richardson controls the ball for the Wildcats, and he finds Old Strike. Old Strike working on the right side, picks up his dribble, and he kicks it back to Richardson. Sixth quarter remaining in the fourth quarter. Wildcats trailing 43-38. to 38. As Gidry a drive to the Cubs, shooting the layup, no good as he gets fouled on the play. As number four, Jordan Gidry will be going to the charity strike for the Wildcats. And trying to pick up who they call that with on. Uh, it's going to allow – you had your big guy, yeah, Boris, in the, in the paint. I believe on they Kel- called that on Kelsey. Okay. As – Gidry sinks his first free throw, and he'll shoot one more. 6.35 remaining here in the fourth quarter as his second free throw is up and no good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. As the Wildcats are going to remain in their full court trap defense as Vaughn kicks it to Hill. Hill swings to Moore. Moore kicks it down low to the wide open the group. Of the Where's the foul? Where's the foul? Where is the foul? Where is the foul? Where is the foul? We don't see it, but nonetheless, shot good by number three, Andy McGrew. And they're going to call a charge on the play. You can correct that charge to number two, Corbin Vines, on the perimeter. I guess that's where the foul is. <laughs> because that, There's was your foul. Ob- that was an obvious foul on McGrew getting that basket down below. <laughs> it was a great hustle play by number two, Corbin Vines, to pick up the charge on the defensive side for the Bulldogs as they will have the ball as he kicks it to McGrew. McGrew finds the big man Morris down low. He kicks it back to McGrew. And McGrew swings it over to Vine. Bulldogs being patient on offense. They find McGrew in the corner for a three-point jumper. No good. Rebound by the Wildcats. Who goes the court is? Old Spice shooting the layup. No good. <laughs> As that ball goes out of bounds. McGrew hustling <laughs> and helped that ball get out of bounds with the swipe. And right now the Bulldogs are pumped up. <laughs> As the Wildcats inbound is Richardson. Richardson stops for the mid-range jumper. That's way off. Rebound by the Bulldogs. Good job. Good boxing out. Now slow this thing down, and let's back the truck up and get out of here. Well, you definitely know that that is Coach Claiborne's game. He's definitely not a run-and-gun type offense. So slowing down is his thing. As Hill just holds the ball, working on the left side, and he finds Vines. And Vines... Being guarded by Grice, and he kicks it to Morris. Morris working from the perimeter. He finds McGrew. Bulldog just working the ball around, and they trying to get it to the big man Morris down low. They're going to call a foul on number one, Tory Richardson of the Wildcats. 
That foul is going to be on the ground as the Bulldogs will have possession. Well, right now, what the Bulldogs got to do, don't get so enamored by feeding your guy down low. Feel the tight. Do what got you this lead and finish it out. As the Bulldogs inbound it, as Hill controlling the ball for the Bulldogs, being guarded by both. As Hill with drive penetrate, stops in the mid-range. Jumper, no good with offensive rebound by the Bulldogs. It's Kelsey. Kelsey trying to put it back in. As that ball goes out of bounds, last touch by the Wildcats. As Richardson appears that he was trying to save it before it went out of bounds. And it will be the Bulldogs' possession. Well, the Bulldogs got to take advantage of these opportunities right now. As he was controlling the ball for the Bulldogs, being guarded by both. As he was being trapped, and he finds Kelsey. And Kelsey kicks it over to McGrew. McGrew drops penetrates, kicking it to Moore, but that ball is turned over, caused by the Wildcats. As Richardson, as that ball gets swiped, and I think Charlie head. Hill just fired Richardson, out of here. and I think. Now, he, as we are hearing the buzzers, as that, did they well, call that one on here? No, they called that one on on Corbin Vine. Okay, well that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so Charlie Hill getting a little life here. <laughs> uh, life <laughs> line. As the Wildcats will retain the ball, trailing forty-five to thirty-nine in the fourth quarter here with four thirty remaining. As Richardson controlling the ball, working on the left side, being guarded by McGrew. As Richardson kicks it to Gidget. Gidget with the long step carry three point jumper, if you will, but that's no good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. He threw that one up there, man. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, he was deep. As the Bulldogs controlling the ball, as Hill kicks it to Vines. Vines being trapped. On the far side of the court. Man, he might need to file a report, man. He's being mugged. <laughs> and they're trying to find more down low. But that ball is turned over, caused by the Wildcats. Travel. And both <laughs> shooting the layup for the Wildcats. Oh, and, oh. And, and, and with that, the Wildcats cut this lead down 45 to 41 here in the fourth quarter with 340 remaining. Yeah, and that's why I say you got to still attack the cup, man. Don't don't get into prevent defense. Uh, keep attacking. And Morris shooting the turnaround layup, no good. Rebound by the Wildcats quickly up the court as Gidry loses that ball, but he picks it back up and he's going to call a, <laughs> a timeout. That was a desperate timeout called by number four, Jordan Gidry. And we'll take a timeout and come back with the remaining portion of this fourth quarter. Bulldogs leading so far by the score of 45 to 41. Keep it locked right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. The following sponsors are contributors to today's broadcast here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. The Temple of Refuge Ministries, located in Prairie View, Texas. Garland Harris, Jr. of Keller Williams Realtors in Houston, Texas. Attorney Lee Van Richardson of Hempstead, Texas. Lone Star College of Tumball, Texas. Edmonds Insurance in Walla, Texas. Larry's Automotive in Walla, Texas. Gunderson's Bookkeeping in Walla, Texas. District Attorney Elton Mathis. Prairie View Athletic Club. The Hotline Press in Hempstead, Texas. And the City of Hempstead. Thank you for your contributions and support of our student athletics here throughout Walla County and beyond. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, the voice of student athletics. 3.27 3.27 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Teams coming back from timeout. The Bulldogs are leading 45-41 to 41 as the Wildcats will inbound the ball under their own basket as Manning kicks it to Richardson. Richardson finding Grice with a three-point jumper. No good. Ball picked up by the Bulldogs as Vines picks up the court as he gets fouled on the play. They're going to call that foul on number one, Tory Richardson of the Wildcats as the home side of the court is definitely not pleased with that call. As the board, and they're going to appear to be a stoppage in play 
As we know, we are in the bonus. So number two, Corbin Vines will go to a charity strike to shoot one and one for the Bulldogs. And this is where you got to make it count, man. You're in hostile, hostile territory as he makes that first free throw. And it appears that the Bulldogs have found themselves in close ball games in, in these past few games. So they kind of have always found themselves shooting free throws in these tight ball games here late in the fourth quarter. You know, the last time they played this team, they were they missed 19 free throws. And as you mentioned, they lost by seven. As Vine sinks his second free throw to get a Bulldogs a 47-41 lead here in the fourth quarter with three minutes remaining. As Manning controls the ball for the Bulldogs, he finds Richardson, who drops to the basket, shooting the layup, and it's in as he gets fouled on the play. But along with Mike Prince and I and myself, we were looking for the travel call on his quest to the basket. Skip to the loo, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Hopscotch, if you will. Yes, sir. But nonetheless, number one, Tory Richardson is going to the line that makes it a three-point opportunity for the Wildcats. As his free throw is good, and he does just that. And with that, the Wildcats cut this lead down to just three. As the ball goes out of bounds, they're going to say last touch by the Wildcats. Now, they're going to call a foul charge against the Wildcats. Let's go and shoot them. Let's go. you got to make them count right now. As number five, Philip Prince will try to make this count for the Bulldogs as he will be shooting one and one. At the charity strike. Prince is 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Last time he shot, he did not get enough air. It's kind of shooting flat. See if he makes that adjustment. As we have some substitutions for the Wildcats, number 15, Jordan Grice, and number 33, Justin Rubble. As Prince's free throw is no good, flat one yet again, but the ball is picked up by the Bulldogs, so they'll have a fresh offensive possession. Yeah, you got it. You got to. And make those count, man, on the road. Senior ball player, you got to make that happen. As Morris drops to the basket, shooting the layup, no good. Rebound by the Wildcats, hooked up the court. It's Richardson. Richardson kicking it to Grice. Grice shooting the layup, no good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. Wow. You're talking about that was – I hadn't been making a count, but that's a lot of miss in the paint baskets by the a Wildcats. As the Bulldogs – appear to be a lucky on that particular play as the home side of the floor was looking for a foul call on Vines, but it was a no call. As that ball is tipped and it goes out of bounds, they're going to say last touch by the, the Mus- Wildcats. The Wildcats. He want to call them the Mustangs for some <laughs> reason. Uh, but but uh, right now, you got to take a special note. If I'm Tumball Memorial and that Prince is on the floor, that's who I'm fouling because his free throws have been flat. And they're getting to the point where they're going to almost have to start doing that with the time remaining. Speaking of the time remaining, we have two minutes left in this ball game. Bulldogs leading 47 to 44 as Prince swings it over to Vines. Vines back to Prince. As Prince nearly loses that ball, and he gets it back and he kicks it to Morris. And Morris kicks it to the wide open hill on the basket. Hill pump face shooting the layup, and it's in. Good job, Charlie Hill, coming through tonight. Number 22, Charlie Hill, the senior, coming through clutch in the fourth quarter for the Bulldogs to give them a 49-44 lead here in the fourth quarter with 130 remaining. As Gidry loses the ball, but it's picked up by Richardson. Richardson kicks the ball in the corner for the three-point jumper. No good. Rebound by Morris. Whoa, that was a push for sure. They're going to call a foul. They're going to call a foul charge against the big man, Jonathan Morris. They're going to say he pushed off. And it's hard to push off when you got the ball and you get pushed from behind. Well, Morris was falling was falling to the ground as he appears to have pushed off on that last play. He had both hands on. Does he have a third arm on his back? <laughs> <laughs> According to the referees, he do. And <laughs> Walla Nation is in a fury. <laughs> yeah, they're furious. And with that last foul by Jonathan Morris that put the Wildcats in the And a Coach Claiborne is just to keep stirring the fire up. He's hot. And <laughs> Tumball Memorial is saying, all oh, sit down and be quiet. We got Thelma and Louise right in front of us. <laughs> and everybody. Everybody's <laughs> hot. The crowd is hot. I'm hot. You hot. This yeah. is a hot ball game. Yeah. In the wintertime. <laughs> in the wintertime. <laughs> but they're going to say they're not in the one-and-one one just yet, so the Wildcats will inbound it. 
125 remain in the fourth quarter. Right now, the Bulldogs need a strong defensive turnover right now. Three-point jumper by Richardson, and it's good. 47-49 our score in favor of the Bulldogs in the fourth quarter here with 110 remaining. That was a big shot. As it had just turned into a nail-biter as Hill controls the ball for the Bulldogs. He kicks it to Vine, and Vine kicks it back to Hill. Hill being trapped, and he kicks to Vine. Vine stops his dribble, finds Prince. Bulldogs just trying to work this ball around. It appears that they're going to try to play keep away yes, sir. from the Wildcats. If they find a kick it to look oh! out, look out below. <laughs> Number 25, oh, 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 oh. Zach Kelsey with the dunk with some authority. Hello, mother. And a three-point jumper by Gidry for the Wildcats. No good. Rebound by the Bulldogs. As Prince quickly up the court, driving to the basket, shooting the layup, and it's in. Number five, Philip Prince said, let's eat. And with that, the Bulldogs take a, 50, a 53-47 score here in the fourth quarter with 14 seconds remaining. As Richardson shooting the three-point jumper, no good. They're going to call a child and violation charge against number one, Tory Richardson. And with that, the Bulldogs will have possession. Yes, sir. Six points for Philip Prince on the drive-through. Uh, timeouts taken on the floor right now. And the Bulldogs got to finish. You still got some time left. But this is how they're supposed to finish strong against a team that only has one win, and it was against the Bulldogs. And speaking of the timeout, we're going to take a timeout and come back with the remaining portion of the fourth quarter here from the campus of Tomball Memorial High School in Tomball, Texas. Keep it where you got it, and we'll be right back. The Open Mic Broadcast Network is proud to serve student athletes, their families, and the institutions they represent. Our goal is to provide quality broadcasts that highlights the hard work and dedication these student athletes are committed to. For a donation as small as $6 a month, you can become a listening partner. Visit our website today at obnradio.com. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, serving the community through faith and athletics. As the gym has come alive here from the campus of Tomball Memorial High School with 12.7 seconds remaining on the game clock, Bulldogs leading this one so far by the score of 53-47. to Yeah, it's a six-point lead for the Bulldogs. That's actually only two possessions. So you know Tomball Memorial is going to be trying to shoot the three quick. But what the Bulldogs got to do, maintain the intensity. Don't give up the foul on the shot because you can get a potential four-point play or three free throws. So you got to be smart, and I'm pretty sure that Coach Claiborne is encouraging his guys to say if the huddle back up. <laughs> uh, now this time it looks like Claiborne took a timeout. Time the so line. there's a little cat and mouse game going on right now. <laughs> it's been an exciting contest. Uh, right now we can tell you that Corbin Vines has a total of ten points. He had I'm, uh, – yeah, I'm sorry, eight points. And he got six of those points from the free throw line. McGrew has a total of 14, not 14, but he has a total of uh, 12 points. As I'm sorry, nine points, as he has one three-pointer tonight. Philip Prince has a total of six points. You have um, Mr. Morris, Jonathan Morris, with a total of 14 points. You have a total of 10 points for Charlie Hill. Four points for Kelsey, but that last bucket by Kelsey was a thunder slam. Exactly. And as you mentioned before, if you're talking about Memorial, you want to follow the guy on the opposing team that has not been successful at the free throw line so far. That's been Philip Prince. But if I'm the Bulldogs, I want the ball in the hands of my best free throw shooter, at least so far in this ball game. Absolutely. And that <laughs> has been Corbin Vine. <laughs> as teams are coming back from the timeout, and Bulldogs will inbound and will be healed as – he was being trapped, and he finds Vine as Vine is just going to hold out as the Wildcats are going to try to foul, and they do just that as the Wildcats will foul number 22, Charlie Hill. Looks like Charlie Hill will go to the line to shoot two. As, I mean, uh, not on the double yet. Not well, the, yeah, not quite in the double yet. Number, so Charlie Hill will be shooting one and one, and it appears that the Wildcats have kind of let too much time go off the game clock as we have 2.9 seconds remaining on the game clock as number 22, Charlie Hill, will be, sh- will be shooting one and one His first free throw is good to increase the Bulldogs' lead, 54 to 47. 
as he will shoot one more. As his second free throw is good. 54-47 our score. And with that, this ball game has come to an end. Bulldogs victorious in this one by the score of 55 to 47. We're going to take a break and come back with our post-game assessment in this ball game. Bulldogs victorious by the score of 55 to 47. Stay tuned right here on the Yuma Mike Broadcast Network. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We got our post-game report right now. Coach uh, Earl Claiborne has joined us, the Bulldogs, with a much-needed win on the road. Uh, they've been taking care of business at home, but on the road have been a challenge. And, Coach, we got you here. We may mention before, I may mention before, as a competitor, when you played this team the first time, the number that kept sticking out to me was 19. 19 missed free, free throws. throws. Yes. And when, when you get back and get the opportunity and you look at that, I'm furiated as an as a athlete right. that this team has one win and yes, the only yes, win sir. was against me. Yes. Give us a recap on how everything went. Tonight. Well, absolutely. You know, you hit it right on the head there, Brother Prince. Uh, that was my motivational speech for these guys. <laughs> these guys are one and nine, and guess who that one is against? It's against us. Uh-huh. And so uh, we didn't play our very best the very first time, missing those free throws. But I thought the kids persevered tonight because we were up against some, some – uh, Tough competition, and also the officials wasn't giving us no breaks. Oh, well, we, we call them as we see them uh, right. up here, and we got the cat's view from right up here. Right. Uh, some questionable calls, but as long as you've been doing this, as long as I've been oh, yeah. doing this, you got to tell your guys, <laughs> yeah, hey, stop right. looking over your shoulder, right. uh, stop whining, you know, and play through those things. That's that mental toughness that we need yes, to keep Yes, it is, in. and I, I keep telling them, let me handle the officials. I don't need you worrying about the officials. Let me handle them. And uh, everything will be fine. Yeah, everything is fine. Speaking of, a good balance attack tonight. You had eight points by Corbin Vine. We call the big three Corbin Vine. Um, well, uh, actually, we were saying Charlie Hill, Kelsey, and um, uh, um, Morris. Uh, right. Jonathan Morris. But actually, my big three is Philip Prince. Corbin Vine. Well, we talking about scoring. Oh, you talking about yeah. scoring? Okay, all right. Okay. Let's clarify that then. Okay. All right. We're, we're, we'll talk about Prince here in just a second. All right. uh, you had a strong night, um, Morris, with 14 points. Hill with 12 points, and more importantly, he played with four fouls. It looked like he may have gotten a break for a minute, Coach, because yeah. uh, they end up sticking vines with their fouls. They sure I did. think they got the two twos mixed up. I think they did, and I was glad <laughs> that they did. Yeah, because, uh, you know, Charlie's one of our leaders, and we need him out there on the floor as much as we can have him out there. Uh, but I was just proud of the guys, the way they hung in there and stayed together as a team. Yes, sir. And, and team is really what it's all about. Now, speaking of Philip Prince, Every kid thinks they got a jump shot. Right. And, you know, and, and, and for those who don't know, Philip Prince is my son, but I don't give him any slack. Right. He needs to be shooting 12 foot in the end but driving the cup. His, his, his game is attacking the cup. Now, Coach, you tell him, because if I tell him, right. he's going to think I'm crazy. His free throws are flat. Right. He's not getting air underneath. I don't know if that's fatigue or what, but in the early part of the season, he was getting the arc right. in it, but when you're shooting uh, free throws, you got to have a little touch, but I don't, know, touch. But I don't know what I'm talking about. Now, in his defense, Dad, hey, listen, <laughs> I need him to keep doing exactly what he's doing. Playing, oh, I know. Playing defense and being that ball hawker, and uh, sometimes you got to take that shot when it comes to you. He, that shot that he took, he didn't have a choice but to shoot. He's wide open. No, oh, I knew that. And then I tell he, you, know, he, he can, brought me to the he brought me he brought me to the water on that. Yeah, you got to shoot that. Now, what you do not right now? You got a two game winning streak right now. You got some big games coming. You you're still going to be at home, but I think your next game will be against Willis. Willis, and that's going to be at home. Right. It was a little confrontational out there at Willis right, right. now. You got to keep that same intensity right now. So, how do you get your guys geared up? Because we're talking about. 14, 16, 17-year-old right. kids, and, man, they, they get high, yeah. and you can't tell them nothing. And right. what, what do you tell them to well, do that, now? Well, that carrot that I got dangling over their head is that <laughs> playoffs. Yes, sir. Because, you know, we want to make the playoffs, and that's our goal. That's been our goal from day one is to make the playoffs, and I keep dangling that carrot over them. I say we need, we need to keep winning. Okay. I'm not telling them any number because we want them all. Yes, sir. We want them all, but wink, wink. Yeah, I think we're in pretty good shape. Yes, sir, we are. <laughs> we are. We're in pretty good shape. Coach Earl Claiborne and the Bulldogs get a, a much-needed win, a game of redemption, if you will, as they were able to return the favor here on Tumball Memorial's home court, beating them by the score of 55 to uh, 47. With that, the Bulldogs now move to 6-3. and three. 
Uh, oh, six and four. Seven and four. Seven and four. Yes, Forgive sir, me. Seven and four. seven and four in district play. And coach, um, I was here when you first got here, uh-huh. and uh, you did have a good uh, playoff run a few years back. But right. this has got to be a good feeling for you right now to see how these guys are working. Oh, through. it is, man. Because see, these kids here come up through the ranks. You know, I've been watching these kids since they went to seventh grade. When I first got here, they were seventh graders or whatever. And it's just amazing just to watch the maturity and development that has come along with these guys. Yes, sir. Coach, as always, man, we appreciate All you. Right. Uh, I know you got to get these kids back, man. But Coach Earl Claiborne and the Bulldogs improving their district record to seven and four. The Bulldogs will next be in action on Tuesday night against the Willis Wildcats, another Wildcat. Yeah. Uh, so you know, dogs supposed to beat up cats there anyway. You go. There you so go. let's go for the for the trifecta yes, here because sir. we got another we got another cat somewhere, don't we? Uh, well, the Cougars, we already played yeah, them, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. but we'll get it all taken care of. We're going to take a break. We'll come back with our closing thoughts and comments. You're listening to the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the voice of student athletics. All right. So these are contributors to today's broadcast here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. The Temple of Refuge Ministries, located in Prairie View, Texas. Garland Harris, Jr. of Keller Williams Realtors in Houston, Texas. Attorney Lee Van Richardson of Hempstead, Texas, Lone Star College of Tumball, Texas, Edmonds Insurance in Walla, Texas, Larry's Automotive in Walla, Texas, Gunderson's Bookkeeping in Walla, Texas, District Attorney Elton Mathis, Prairie View Athletic Club, The Hotline Press in Hempstead, Texas, and the City of Hempstead. Thank you for your contributions and support of our student athletics here throughout Waller County and beyond. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, the voice of student athletics. And welcome back to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Andre Davis alongside the Dr. Mike Prince, the Bulldogs victorious in this ball game by the score of 55 to 47. This is a game that the Bulldogs did exactly what we predicted in the pregame show. Um, get in the driver's seat early, get that foot on the gas, and they were able to maintain that throughout uh, this ball game. So, Mike, your overall assessment, final assessment of this ball game and what the Bulldogs have to do to keep this momentum going leading into the next game against Willis High School. Well, I believe that, that Coach Claiborne summed it up and just keep the intensity, understand that no one is really – going to to uh, give you anything and go in there and take what you want. If you want a playoff spot, then earn that playoff spot and do what, it, what it's going to take in order to be successful. And uh, you heard the excitement and the enthusiasm out of Coach Claymore. We may mention we kept punching on how it was important for the Bulldogs to be effective from the free throw line. They missed 19 free throws against this team last time. Well, I'm proud to announce that the Bulldogs – Ended up with a total of six, eight. This here is 11. 11 of 16. 11 wow. of 15. 11 of 15 from the line tonight. That's the difference maker. That was a, that's, that's, that's great. Yes, Ac- sir. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And so they turn things around. Uh, they got they got to stay level headed though. These are young guys. Uh, this is a team. To be honest with you, you should have beat the first time. So don't right. get don't get too high minded right now, uh, thinking that you did something. You did what you're supposed to do. Now let's get geared for the Wildcats of Willis on this next broadcast. And we had, and they definitely have to keep that that momentum going. Uh, the one thing that we mentioned, you know, they did exactly what they need to do as far as getting uh, Jonathan Morris. I know that uh, Kelsey was kind of struggling a little bit there uh, in the ball game with that mid range jumper from the free throw line that he also loves. Uh, so much, but we saw the guards again, as we mentioned, you know, getting into this ball game often and early, and that's, and that's why I love to see, you know, Prince and uh, Vines and even McGrew coming off the bench, you know, doing what he does uh, shooting often and early, and they're they're successful when when everybody is contributing, you know, most of these teams, especially in this, uh, this district especially with Burnham, uh, most of these guys have the Bulldogs number meaning they know that because Morris and Kelsey are probably the two biggest guys in this district, so Everybody in this district knows that, hey, the Bulldogs are going to get Morris and Kelsey. They're going, to get, they're going to get the Twin Towers in this ball game often and early. So the Bulldogs, knowing that, they have to come into each ball game with an alternative, with the mindset that, hey, we're with going to – With an attitude. With an, with an attitude, exactly, that we're going to get everybody uh, – 
involved in this ball game early and often. But nonetheless, Bulldogs victorious by the score of 55 to 47. And again, the next time, as they mentioned, we'll be coming at you with the Open Mic Broadcast Network. We'll be on February 7th as the Bulldogs will return home against Willis High School. Tip off of that game will be at 7. And that means opening tip. We'll be coming at you with the Open Mic Broadcast at 6.45 with the pregame show. Bulldogs victorious, 55 to 47. I'm Andre Davis alongside the Dr. Mike Prince, and we will see you next time.